Hey everyone, welcome to 996 of Howl, episode 32. We got, to, we got a lot to unpack in this episode, but for the uninitiated, this is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes, and it's been a busy week for those Coyotes. We had the trade deadline, an Eastern road trip, and a Sunday home game against the Hurricanes. Let's start with the deadline. That Boston game where they lost 4-1, they looked really bad. A lot of uncertainty surrounding the team. Was Doan going? Was Verbata going? No one was really trying. No one had passion in that game. They're sort of skating through mud. And that carried on into the Buffalo game just after the deadline. Verbata stays. Doan stays. So the team should feel good about themselves. But they get badly outplayed by the Sabres. They, they're in that game for like until the end of the third period, with the, which they shouldn't have been. They should have been blown out. I mean, Smith has been playing pretty awful lately, ever since that Chicago game where he let in six goals. I mean, against Chicago, against Boston, against Buffalo, he was looking weak. Thankfully, he upped his game against the Carolina Hurricanes on Sunday. And also credit to Domingue. He played against Buffalo last Sunday. And he played in Carolina just last week. And he was playing awesome. Back to his last year form. He was making incredible saves. Keeping the team in. And he's the reason why the Coyotes beat Carolina in Raleigh last week. Smith played awesome, like I said, in, uh, on Sunday against Carolina in Arizona. But unfortunately, he couldn't get a win. A lucky bounce. Two minutes left in the game. Carolina wins a 2-1. But back to the trade deadline, I want to take my hat off to Redeem for Bada, just showing great integrity, great class, actually being vocal about wanting to stay in Arizona, showing the young guys that, hey, I want to play here, I'm happy here. And he gets rewarded with the A on his chest. I mean, you can't ask for a better leader than that, saying they want to stay. And credit to Shane Doan, it's most likely his last year, and he chooses... He chooses to stay in Arizona as well. He wanted Chaika to test the waters to see if a team would want him, but that opportunity never came up, and Doan's sticking with the Coyotes. And he had a great game against Carolina, getting three points, getting an empty netter, setting up the game-winning goal for uh, on Martinuk's goal point-blank past Ward. So, um, yeah, the team had a rough stretch. But they played great against Carolina on Sunday. OEL has been playing pretty low to his standards the past two weeks, I say. We really need him to step up. I don't know why he's going through this slump. If it's a lingering injury that he's not telling anyone or it's an illness or he just lost his passion. He needs to be reinvigorated. I mean, he's supposed to be our star defenseman. And right now, you know, Luke Shen... Jacob Chikrin are playing great hockey right now. And OEL looks looks out of sorts, to be honest, on some plays. Another player that's playing great is Christian Dvorak. I mean, just looking back at the beginning of the season and seeing how he played and looking at him now, it's just two completely different players. I mean, this guy's got so much confidence. He's touching the buck, puck so much more often and doing great things with the puck. He's relentless on the forecheck. And that's rubbing off on some young guys like Kraus and even Perlini. Perlini's so hard behind the net in the offensive zone. And just Dvorak really took that promotion to the number one center really well. He plays great with Domi and Verbata. So hopefully he gets some more points. He's been scoring a lot and getting in on the score sheet really a lot often this past uh, month, month and a half. So it's really great to see Dvorak. You know, getting on the score sheet, the team having faith in him, Chaika having faith in him. And um, last but not least, the Duke is back in Arizona. I was surprised by this call-up. He only had 8 points in 11 games on two, in Tucson. But uh, apparently Chaika liked the way he changed the, his game in Tucson, and so he brought him back up. And you can see the difference in Duclair. I mean, Sunday in that, against Carolina in uh, Arizona. He was touching the puck often like Dvorak, but he was generating his own offense. He wasn't waiting for someone else to create the offense. He was back checking hard, forward checking hard, 
getting great shots. He had two posts in that game. And even being on the fourth line, he was generating offense, which I was I was mad at Tippett for putting him on the fourth line. You know, what do you expect Duke to do when his teammates are Holland and Kraus? But man did do do man did Duclair generate some great offense with with those teammates. He gets an assist on Holland's goal. So great to see him get a point in his first or second game back. And I hope he keeps uh, trekking on. Maybe he gets promoted to a line with Reeder and Burmistrov. I'd like to see that line. Or even the Triple Ds, Domi, Dvorak, and Duclair. They had one shift in Car- uh, against Carolina where all three of them were on the ice. And just so happy to see them three on the same line. And that could be our future first line. Who knows? D'Angelo has been in the lineup steadily, and he'll be in the lineup for the next few weeks with Kanaden out with an injury. And uh, every game, he gets better. The first couple games where he got called up, wasn't playing well, got scratched in favor of Kanaden. But now he's starting to pick it up. Their breakouts have been great, were great against that, against Carolina. But the previous week against Boston Buffalo, their breakouts were were really bad, scrambling all around in their zone. But ever since they came back home, really structured defense, turning around with the puck, keeping puck possession, and just gener- generating offense when there's when there's a hole to be made and not just forcing it. They got Ottawa next Thursday, and then New Jersey, and then Colorado. So couple odd teams that they don't really face but winnable games that Ottawa game I like to see see what Ottawa is about and, you know we haven't seen Ottawa since the second or third game of the season so I'd like to see uh, how they play and Colorado having a bad season so hopefully that's a big win for the Desert Dogs that's it for me thank you for watching thank you for your support